Hello and welcome to Claire's World. I am Claire and today I would like to share with you more the information I've received from the 25th dimension during my last BQH hypnosis session. I'll be reading from a transcript of a portion of the session and I'll be referring to Lorraine who's the practitioner and who is asking me questions I prepared in advance of the session unless of course the question comes from someone else and she'll say so if that's the case. And then I'll be referring to me, which means that I am speaking of myself under hypnosis. And that means the answers are coming from the 25th. And before I start reading, I would like to thank you as always. I truly appreciate those of you who are not only watching, but also liking and commenting on the videos. That really helps me. And I just love seeing your comments anyway and see where everybody's going through. So thank you so much for that. Okay, I'm going to start reading here. And the very first question is actually a private question that was put to me by a watcher, by a viewer. And, uh, and so I will not be sharing names, obviously, but uh, uh, this person uh, was asking a question about, oh, you know, something that's going on in their lives and you'll see. And uh, the reason I want to share this with you is because I really enjoyed and found value in the 25th answer. And this person has told me that uh, this person is very connected and very awake. So uh, I knew that they would understand. And this person was also giving me uh, positive feedback in how the 25th relates to these questions. Because if you have gone to any energy healers or that kind of thing, normally you get answers as to what you're supposed to do. Is this a good idea? This is not a good idea. Whereas the 25th always goes to the root of things. So you'll understand exactly what I mean as I read through here. And so I just want to thank this person for posing this question because I think it's uh, it's uh, value adding to all of us. I know it was for me, for sure. Lorraine. Okay, this question is from, and we'll call this person uh, uh, Bob. Okay. He asks, since I left my job, I've been struggling with my financial trading business for years. I almost gave up last year, but during a spirit guide reading, my guide told me I was on the right path and it is still the profession that I want to do, but it didn't get better. To improve my situation, should I keep improving my trading? And if so, how? Or should I sell my apartment or do something else? Please elaborate. Me. Yeah, so he likes, so there is a clue there. He likes to do what he's doing. So he should do what he likes doing. However, because he's asking, should he do this or should he do that? As in, in his mind, what is going to set him to the best outcome? And in his mind, what does it mean, the best outcome? I'm assuming it means money. What's going to make him money and what's going to take care of him? Here's the thing. The higher self is not always concerned. Well, it's rarely concerned with money. So this trading, what is this trading doing for him? One, he's enjoying it. Two, it's allowing him a freedom that he doesn't talk about in the question, but it's allowing him a freedom to analyze his reality, to have a certain time to himself, to study, to do things. He even has the opportunity to get better at it, and he wants to know how. The fact is, is how yourself is telling him, enjoy, look at it it's a, as a game, as a game that it is. Now, we understand that he's also concerned. Well, I have to make a living for myself. Of course, it's always what happens at a 3D level is that this is, there is this need, these financial needs in conflict sometimes with our want to do something fun for ourselves because we have to provide. And so now we're saying, okay, what do we need to do? What you need to do is, we don't want to give advice as in this is what you have to do. This is how, this is not how it works. He's a free individual. So it's how yourself does want him to have fun. But if this is becoming a source of stress and he's feeling trapped and he's thinking, I have to do all these things, otherwise I will not survive, then he needs, that's what he needs to look at. Where is this fear coming from? Does he like this training? Is it worthwhile to him? The way that he's doing it, the way that is happening. If it has now become a source of dejected hope, then maybe he's not enjoying it as much anymore. 
So maybe you should pull away just because of that. Not because it's not making the money that he wants it to make. So the better question is, why does his higher self, for example, why did he go and do this BQH session? Why did he go and do all these things? He's looking for guidance. He's looking for certain information to be brought to him. And what information was brought to him that he enjoys it, which he already knew, and that he's on the right path, which he already knew because he enjoys it. It's just like when Claire wrote the book. She hasn't made really any money out of it. I mean, she sold several hundred copies, but it really hasn't made any difference in her financial life. But her higher self wanted her to do that. And she did it in many ways, enjoying it. It had nothing to do with the money. If it has to become a matter of money, then the question is, why did you get this information back telling you you do enjoy this? Which again, you already knew. What is it that your higher self is wanting you to know? So if you're asking, is this what's going to make you millions? No, it's not. This was never, although it is trading, it was never about money for you. The essence will not work for money. We think money is so important. The essence could not care less. The essence just wants you in a situation where you get to do the things that your essence wants to experience. If your essence wanted to experience you being a billionaire, you would be a billionaire. You probably win the lottery. You don't even have to sweat it. Because for the essence, everything is possible. So it's looking at it from the perspective of what he wants to know. In order to make money, do I continue doing this or do I do something else? And the higher self instead is trying to get information to him to let him know, you do enjoy this. This is good for you. There are many benefits that come out of this. But no, becoming a multimillionaire is not one of them. So what do you want to do now? And this is the feedback he has been getting. He just keeps resisting it. So can he sell his place and do something else? Absolutely. But is that what his higher self wants of him? He does enjoy it. Can he make it go? What he's doing, if he's enjoying it? For example, he's talking about becoming better at trading. Maybe he should do that. How? He knows how. He knows how. Why is he asking? Who is he asking? He knows how. It will come to him. If that's what he wants to do, it will come to him. He'll get an email that says, here's training. Maybe he's thinking, I should go back to school, if that's what he thinks he has to do. But it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that hard. It doesn't have to be that time consuming. It doesn't have to be any other way than what he thinks it has to be like. For him, it might mean that he does an online course. Maybe it's a six-hour online course, and all of a sudden he says, I'm going to get better, and he is going to get better because he's in charge of everything. As I said, I love this answer. It just made me think of so many things and how we're really supposed to go about trying to understand what our higher self wants for us. And of course, we have to balance that with our needs in 3D reality. But uh, I guess the idea, the lesson for me here was that uh, we can balance. We, we can investigate more and not just disregard everything that the higher self might want and say, no, this doesn't work for me. So, and I know, and again, I know that Bob in the question, Bob is very connected. Well, we're all connected, but he's very aware. And, uh, and so I, uh, I know that he's understood fully what uh, what the 25th had to say. So I hope this was of value to you guys as well. All right, Lorraine, we all are. Thank you. So his second question is, he says that during the BQH session, he had the thought, he thought he saw someone he knows on the new earth. According to the Akashic, they have a soul agreement to be soulmates. Is he meant to be together with this person in this current life? And is she going to New Earth? Me. Yeah, so they're saying that, yes, she's going to New Earth. But they're also reminding us the Akashic records are not a record. I mean, if you want them to be a record, they can be for you. So again, where are you getting this information is the question. Because again, the Akashic records are not black and white. They're not like a library where you go and you look up in the book and here's the piece of information, like it's an encyclopedia. So the question is, why did he run into this information? Why did he need to know? Why does he need to know that? So this person, he needs to know about this person because he's ready. He's ready to go to New York. That's why he needed to know where there's somebody there waiting. 
this person is not there waiting physically. There's nobody on the earth now, as we said. There's something to look forward to is what we're trying to say. And yeah, even the concept of soulmates, we are soulmates with many, many people, everybody in our team. You could think of them as soulmates. Really, we're soulmates with everyone. We are one, and they were laughing. You can't be any closer than that. But if you want to think of it like the people that you keep reincarnating with, that's what you can consider soulmates. This is a person, an individual, another essence that he decided, if you want to think of yourselves as individuals, that he decided that you were going to be together with on your earth. And they're saying that, yes, this person is going to be there. And again, I share this because uh, it reminds us of what they've told us before about the cash records. It reminds us of how we set up information to come to us so that there is always this behind the scenes of why we want to hear this information from an outside source. And uh, of course, we already know all these things at the essence level, but the essence is trying to get this information to percolate through our conscious mind. And so when we meet this information, we can either take it at face value or ask the question, why am I getting this information? What was I trying to figure out? What is my essence trying to tell me? So I love it. And uh, that's why I wanted to share. All right. Okay. Lorraine, this is a question for me. Coyotes have been attacking livestock and pets in the daytime. This is unusual. They usually hunt at night. This has been happening all over the United States over the last several months. Yesterday, I had a chicken grabbed and killed. What is causing this phenomenon? Is it chemtrails? Is it 5G? What is the answer, please? Me. There are NPCs. There are no rules anymore. There are no more rules. We were supporting the rules, the system that we thought had to be a certain way with our essence. The essence is gone. There are no more rules. Lorraine, so the essence of the coyotes is gone? Me. That's right. Lorraine, okay, however, they're attacking some pets that still have their essences. So is it an agreement of the essence to be taken out that way, to transition back to the 25th? Me. Not all pets have essences left in them. And so it might be that they're already gone too. There's only NPCs left. Because remember, the essence always chooses, and you know this, you just mentioned it. And so in that sense, if the essence had chosen that, then yes, it would have been the essence. But generally speaking, the essence is not, not really choosing that right now because they're either going with the aliens or if they had left and they're saying, okay, my NPC can die this way, it's okay. But again, the essence would have been gone or they're waiting for us. They're going to new earth with us. So this wouldn't be happening to these essences. And so if it's happening to pets, I mean, a lot of the pets, their essences are also gone. As we said, only 7% of animals are left here at this time. Lorraine, thank you. Another question from me, talking about wild critters. The other day, I got stung by a bee and it just kept stinging. So even insects have essences and are we going to see these strange phenomena of non-essenced NPC critters behaving in unnatural manners? Me, yeah, you are because NPCs are breaking down. And it's funny that she asked this question because I went, out to the park with some other mothers of, uh, so we have these play dates at the park and a child, and I felt bad for her. She got stung by an insect like four or five times in a row. It absolutely makes no sense that this would even happen. And already when I saw that, I, I was like, wow, that's wild. So it's uh, this uh, question that Lorraine asked was uh, timely. Lorraine, okay, that makes sense because it was very strange. Okay, this question is also from me. I would like to know, and you may have answered this question for me in some way before, but I think I have more detail in this question. What is the purpose of me having continued sinus challenges? I know the deepest level of myself that this can be cleared up in an instant. It is my agreement to this and my belief. With everything I do or believe, the problem still remains and breathing is still a challenge. If we're exiting this game, why is it that I'm still needing or feeling that I need to have this issue? And if you've seen my previous videos, I have brought this up before because Lorraine has uh, asked this question or, or question related to the same issue before. And the 25th had already spoken to her about some things. But the reason, well, she's asking again, because of course this is an issue for her. So it's absolutely fine to ask. Uh, but also I wanted to share with you because I thought the answer could help many of us because we're all dealing with some symptoms of some kind. So 
uh, it doesn't have to be sinuses like in Lorraine's case. And Lorraine obviously is okay with me sharing this information. Again, we all have feelings of all kinds. So, uh, you know, it's the answer is has universal value. Me. So we have already discussed that there are a couple of different things going on. One was that this slowed down breathing was helping you cope with all the work you've been doing, the re-entering process, the grounding process, et cetera, et cetera. You do a lot of work, Lorraine, and your body was helping you, and you had asked your body to help you. Now, the other side to this is that also that your higher self, while you at a conscious level might be extremely bothered by something that is going on, your higher self is dealing with so much stuff. You can imagine, you know, even intellectually, you know, the things we're dealing with, takedown, no takedown, delay, all these things that are going on. This is no joke. We are living in a historically multiverse historical times. So your higher self has priorities, things that it's working on that are not necessarily prioritizing the fact that you cannot breathe because you can breathe. Clearly you're breathing, okay? It's not a life and death situation for you. You've been dealing with this for a long time. And so while to you, you might want to enjoy, you do want to enjoy some time where you're like, you know, I want to not experience this anymore. Your higher self is not prioritizing that. So to your higher self, it's not really a priority that needs to worry about and say, okay, we're going to stop this. Now, we already said, your higher self will detach from this reality completely or pretty much completely very close to the actual takedown. Because at that point, it's like it's done, it's moving on. But right now, it's not really concerned with these details. To the higher self, these are our details. Now, you can stop this, and we know that you know this, but think about it. What does this do for your higher self? Is it doing anything for your higher self at all? The fact that you can now breathe freely? What benefit would this add to your higher self? We said this before, we've explained this before. It's not that your higher self disrespects your opinions. There is no disconnect between you and your higher self. It's not that your higher self couldn't care less about you as a body. Almost like you are the body and your higher self is like a puppet master that's moving you around. And so you gotta do what it wants you to do. Doesn't matter what you want. It's not that. But what is your higher self trying to do? Again, your higher self was doing good things to this breathing issue what you experience as an issue. It's doing good things as in it's been going on for a while. It's protected you from many different things. You were not able to do certain things because of your breathing issues. It made it very easy for you to focus on the things that your higher self wanted you to focus on. You become very interested in healing modalities. You become who you have showed up as in this lifetime because of your breathing issues, because of your health issues. So now you're telling your higher self, yeah, okay, but I don't like it. And we're laughing here. You're going to have to convince your higher self that there's more of a value than that, than just the fact that we don't like it. We don't like something or it's inconvenient to us, which doesn't mean your higher self is deaf to it. It's deaf to your physical needs. It just means that if you can align what you want with what your higher self wants, because again, it's you. If you can find out, and we've just given you some clues, what your higher self has been after, that you can find a solution. Absolutely. We talked about this when we talked about finances. If you can figure out why your higher self is keeping you in a certain situation and give it the experience that it wants while you make yourself more financially comfortable, then you can have the best of both worlds. But otherwise, your higher self is deciding. You are your higher self. This is not being done to you. Your higher self is saying, look at all the good things this has done. So simple. I will not let my body breathe freely. And all of a sudden, I get to do A, B, C, and D. That would have never happened otherwise. So connect because you're extremely connected, extremely aware. Figure out what is it? How could you rework things so you do the things that your higher self wants you to do, even if you breathe freely? So you can get both things without taking yourself off track of what your higher self wants to experience. Lorraine, thank you. And of course, yes, I have over the years absolutely been grateful for the experiences that were made available to me as a result. And I will do that. I will spend some time seeing how I can align more and more and become clearer. Thank you very much. I'm gonna stop the video here, but I just love, one, I love how self-aware 
uh, and how consciously connected uh, Lorraine is. So it was a pleasure when the 25th says something and the person receiving the information understands it. <laughs> it's wonderful. And this is why I have this channel in the first place is because I know you guys get this stuff. And that's why I love sharing this with you. So I do hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I would love it if you could let me know below if you are dealing with any um, symptoms, especially that have been kind of weird, maybe coming and going, that kind of thing. Because I am like monitoring this to see how close we are. Because the 25th has told us that uh, as we get closer, our higher self will detach. So we might have had symptoms for a long time that are no longer there or they're getting milder. So actually, you'll see in the next video that Lorraine also had an instance like that. And I have actually had new symptoms that are like telling me that I need to do something different as well. So please let me know in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.